Welcome to the Dumb Idea Podcast Show with Mike and Alex. We thank you for joining us as we have a couple of beers and a cigar and talk about what's going on in our lives. Grab an adult beverage and a smoke and settle in with us. Please like, subscribe, and comment on each show so we can hear whether you agree or disagree with our take on things. Listen wherever your favorite podcasts are and at www.dumbideapodcast.com. All right, so this is a show kind of for the the dads and the moms out there that are raising these young kids. Um, you know, when we were young, the entertainment with with a screen was mostly it was just TV at the time. Saturday morning cartoons, Scooby Doo, Snorks, Transformers, Smurfs, GI Joe, GI Joe Mask. Remember mm-hmm. that one? Oh, the Camaro was yeah. best. I owned an IROC, so I, I love those. So a lot of those shows and then, didn't fly. And maybe you had um, you know, late later Saturday morning you had the WWF. Mm-hmm. And back then it was WWF, was yeah. WWE. And you kind of knew when the Saturday morning cartoons were over because there's like some. It wasn't a cartoon, but it was like an educational show. Right. They kind of like said like. Hey, this is the end cap, mm-hmm. and after this, it's going to be either, well, during non-football season, it was going to be some probably like off-brand sport that was coming on next, right? That no one was going to pay attention to, like the luge, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like some guys or the skeleton, you yeah. Know? It's like the luge, except someone goes down face first. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like the ch- their chin is like a quarter inch off the ice. Yeah, like like what if someone didn't shave the ice properly? A little bump in there. Just take his head right off. Like, could you imagine, like, like with the, the, the runner on the sled, mm-hmm. just going through your juggler? Oh. You're, you're done. You're t- You're finished. Yeah. Good night. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, you know, why, why, like, for me, why take that risk? I'm no. just going to, I'll watch you do it. No, no, I'm not doing it. Maybe I'm, <laughs> I'm not if, doing it at all. And I, and I may be there to see the accident happen. Yeah. Like NASCAR. <laughs> you're, you're, hope, you're kind of rooting for the crash. Yeah. A little bit. Um, but anyway, so... Kids entertainment has definitely changed. No one's going to argue that. Unfortunately, yeah, with the advent of Netflix and YouTube, um, more more YouTube than anything, because you got that uh, the regular joke and create content. Mm-hmm. Um, not beholden to any kind of corporate ethos or backlash for the most part. Like if 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 ABC put something people didn't agree with on Saturday morning cartoons. I'm sure they heard about it and removed the show. Um, whereas on YouTube, if there's enough people that like what you've got, you'll get views. Yeah. Right. And a lot of times, and I know people are going to say this is bad parenting. A lot of times I don't really know what my kid is watching because I'm not watching them every moment of the day. So even if I tell my kid, you know, you shouldn't be on YouTube. Like my kid, we took the app YouTube off. Mm hmm. The iPad. The so she, were they she, using YouTube Kids or were they using YouTube? So I thought it was just the YouTube. Yeah. So she found out she could ask Siri to open YouTube. Oh yeah, and because you can never, you couldn't really ever remove YouTube off yeah. of, of a tablet. Or or Siri would go and open Safari and go to the YouTube website. Yep, and which is giving you everything, right? And so Siri would open it that way. So she figured out that, um, and so she was watching like. She was watching some kid play with Barbie dolls. And I saw her when I was like, you got 20 Barbie dolls over there. Oh, yeah. Why don't you go play with it rather than watching them play with it? She's like, I like it. I want I want to get this Barbie and that Barbie. And that. I'm like, whoa. I was like, all right. So th- there's that aspect of it where it's a little consumerism. But then it's just like, I feel like there's just a lot of brain deadening material. There is. There's so much. Helping at all. Yeah, there's so much crap. And, like, they have the world at their fingertips. Like, they can retrieve any bit of information they want. But some of it, like, the, the kids playing with toys, and I've done the same thing with, with mine. I mean, they're, they're, like, what are you watching? Like, oh, some kid playing. Like, you own that toy. Like, I'm right. looking at it. It's right there. Yeah. And you're watching some other kid play with something you have. Why don't you just go play with it? Right. And you can't even say, like, you know, oh, well, you could watch – you know, an NFL game, or we can go outside and throw a football around. That's true. But, you know, um, I'm not Tom Brady. And, you know, I'm if you and I were playing catch, 
uh, you know, you're not Mike Evans. Right. There's a reason um, why people pay uh, people pay right. to watch them, yeah. not paying to watch me do it. Right. There's there's a big difference there. So, but in the with the toy, it's not like that kid is like a million times better playing with that truck than you are. That's the point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you're not you're not watching greatness. Right. Right. You're just watching some kid do what you could literally do right now. Yeah. And <laughs> you, right. Yeah. <laughs> you you could do that exact thing. You don't got to watch him do it. Right. You just go do it. And but they like doing it. The, the ones I find really, really creepy are the adults that are playing with toys and they're changing their voice. And you know they're adults because it's like a, a a grown woman's hand. Right. It's not a little kid. <laughs> some, some dude with sca- Sasquatch hands. Yeah. And they're like <laughs> playing with the toys. And there was one. Well, these may have been kids. They, they, were, they play with the Disney toys, but to avoid the cease and desist letter for Disney, mm. it was frozen. So rather than saying, Anna and Elsa. It was Anya and Elsia. Right. They changed the names, and they were all talking to each other and moving around. Like, but then the adults are doing it, and I kind of, I when I looked at, it, I kind of understood why they do it because the little kids, they just watch the same thing over and over and over again. So it, their their views go through the roof, right? And eventually, they could probably they can monetize that. Of course, they can. But they're just playing off of a weakness that every kid has. I mean, you know. Every parent out there knows that they they have some DVD in their car that like doesn't run anymore because it just ran the hell out of it. Like right. for us, in our house for a while it was Frozen, then it was um, it was Toys, a Toy Story, and like it, it just like I can I can tell you um, I can probably recite Frozen to you, and I have all boys, but they loved it. I can recite Frozen. Just from driving the car, going back and forth to see family, you know, out of state and all that, I could I could recite the movie. So kids do that. So these opportunistic people go. I mean, what you go buy a, a playset and you play with it and make stupid voices, right? And then the kids. Now, if I ever find this person, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> next we have be, a stern talking to. Next might be snap. <laughs> all right, so what you get for infiltrating my kid's brain (laughs) and therefore mine yeah so you know that's that's some some just creepy weirdness i don't like um now my kids pretty much stay with youtube kids um in fact i don't even know i don't i know i have youtube on my the youtube app on my phone Mm -hmm. but they're not usually on my phone they're usually because i'm not home they're usually with my my wife's stuff so she doesn't have it on there um some of it's not terrible like it's annoying, but it's not terrible. I can do, deal with annoying if they learn something from it. Look, I'm, I'm not saying all the content on YouTube is bad, right? Right. I'm just saying there's a lot of bad content. But I also think, like, when our kids see other kids on YouTube, like, for us, like, when we watch TV and we saw actors on the screen, you know, our parents always said, look, very few people get to go to Hollywood. Yeah. Well... Now, anyone with a camera and a microphone can make a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean people are going to watch you, as evidenced by our podcast. (laughs) Not necessarily everyone's going to listen, but you know it. it, And this is good, damn it! This is is excellent. (laughs) It's the best podcast around. Um, But and actually, to be honest with you, even doing this podcast, like my kids know we do this. Oh yeah, they've seen the equipment and. Like, it, it almost says, like, this is a path they can take, but they don't understand that maybe we got 35 listeners and we make no money doing this. This is right. not a viable profession. Right. At least in, in right now, right? Yeah. Like, I'm not quitting my job. No. For- no, in fact, I'm doing everything I can to protect myself from not getting fired from my job <laughs> by not using personal identif- identifying information. Yeah. Here. Like, I want to make sure crazy people don't try and get me fired. Yeah. Because... My real job makes me money. This is fun, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a ho- it's a hobby. But yeah. they but they see it as like like my kids heard us on the uh, we were playing the podcast when we were riding up to New Jersey, and my kids, you know, they looked up from their tablets like, "Is that Daddy? Is he on the news?" Like, oh yeah. Well, for one, I appreciate you thinking that we're the news <laughs> and that we sound that professional. <laughs> But no, this is, and by the way, if anyone's asking, this is definitely not the news. You should not seek any information from no, this. We, this no source. medical information. <laughs> we, we are here to make people laugh, <laughs> laugh at certain situations, 
laugh at a lot of other things. We are not. This is to not an laughed, informational. You laugh at. <laughs> yeah, right. You laugh at us. This is in no way to provide any information to anyone whatsoever. <laughs> That's the disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to play that on a loop after every show. But no, like they like. But so they see that we do it. And like, well, maybe that's a viable profession. Just like they see, they see mommy go to work at a, you know, where she works. They see me work. Well, they don't really see me work because I work at home. Yeah. So they think I'm a bum. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the, like your kids see you go to work. They think right. your profession is something to do in life. Yeah. You know, and and your life, your wife, when she was working where she worked, yeah. they saw okay, that's a profession. Yeah. That's something I do. Well, my thing is like with. Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. I see how vile people are Ugh. to so so called uh, influencers mm-hmm. or people on YouTube who make money doing this. Yeah, like I don't want my kids to ever have to go through that. And like one of the things with the show is like I'm afraid our my kids might see this and be like, "Well, you did it." Right, and, and not know the difference between what we're doing and then what some like the, like Jake Paul, mm-hmm. or or one of those. And oh I God. see it with my oldest because he, he's still he's a little guy, but you know he, he'll see some of this stuff or some of his older friends or friends older brothers be like, yeah, look at, so he'll see Jake Paul, and what and some of these other influencers in these YouTube shows with their following like. What he doesn't get is these dudes are playing this stuff up for the camera. Right. It's an act. They don't see. They don't think they're acting because right. it looks like real life. Right. Because it looks like a regular house, and they're just regular dudes. Like there's no storyline. Like they're just, you know. So they think like, oh, I can do that, and I, and I can tell when he's been watching something lousy on YouTube because he'll kind of act like that. I'm like, dude, I'll just go on the and I'll pull up the history. Like, oh, yep, that's mm-hmm, that's where it came from. <laughs> right. And you know. We were always told, like, hey, they're actors on TV. It's a story. It's blah, 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 blah. And it was pretty, because it was on TV, and there was a talking Trans Am. So you knew that it wasn't quite real. Right. <laughs> or there was an alien named Alf that ate cats. Right. Like, eh, even, you know, eight-year-old me was like, that's probably not real. I'm going to hedge my bet, because it could be. Right. <laughs> if Alf wanted to be my friend, I'm here. Right. But I'm guessing it's not real. But on YouTube, it looks real because it's just dudes hanging out, being nasty to each other, or chicks being nasty to each other. They're all just they're acting like like jackasses. Well, like that stupid show, The Hills, from MTV. Blech. It was it was like the reality but not reality show. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was scripted reality. Yeah, but they did it with the camera work, so it looked like it was reality show. Mm-hmm. Um, or uh, you know. Even like these Real Housewives shows, like hopefully, I mean, my kids have never seen the Real Housewives show. Thank God for that. Yeah. Right. But yeah, you know, I think they'd be surprised. Like a lot of the stuff is just scripted. But right. The other thing I was, gonna, I had a thought in my head, I lost it. But the one, the thing I was going to talk about was remember the Blair Witch Project? Yeah. It was kind of that start of we can do a scripted show mm-hmm. on. But make it look real through like the shaky camera, yeah. Or it, it, like that was kind of the start, and people believed it. Mm-hmm. People believed it was real, yeah. And that was kind of that start of the scripted reality, yeah. And I think it made it all that more impressive that people thought it was real for so long. Mm-hmm. Like I think there was what a good six months before people found out it wasn't real. Oh yeah, it was scripted. That, that and I remember because that was filmed in Frederick County, and. I lived up there at the time when that all came out and people were driving out there and it was just all this craziness and the the sheriff's office had to go and like post up people there to keep these idiots from doing stupid things out there. And it was just, yeah. But then it was like, oh, no, it's not real. And it kind of like was like a big bummer because like that'd be kind of like, it's a good story. It was. Um, but the YouTube stuff, like it looks like real life and they don't understand that. They're doing, they're behaving a certain way to get, there was one they were watching, uh, what's the name of them? The, I think it's the Ireland Bros. They're also awful. Mm. Um, they were in, they were hiding in a Walmart overnight. Like that was their, and then like the the kids are like, oh, look, they're hiding. We can do that. Like, no, you can't. Right. 
Like, don't call me when the police have you. Don't call me. Right. I'm not coming. Yeah, I'm not coming for that. Yeah, call your mother. Yeah. <laughs> she might come, but I'm not. And, um, like, there, I, I, I don't. I don't expect TV or entertainment to be the influence over my kids. That's my job. Right. My job is also there to control what they're looking at. But it's harder to do that now. Oh, very, very. Because, like, the kids learned how to talk into the device. Right. To say YouTube, and it pulls it up. Uh, Even the baby, like, he pulls up. Like, he'll get on YouTube Kids, and he'll say Blippi, and it'll pull all the blippy videos up right and for you parents out you know for those who are non-parents um or have older kids blippy is this guy and he speaks with a high-pitched voice and he wears a goofy outfit kind of like a clown but not he's not creepy like a clown because clowns really creep me out like it would be a non-starter if it creep, was a clown. creepy like uh barney no barney yeah no, no no he's like a he's a like a just a goofy dude he's almost like in a peewee herman vein like oh, well. yeah all right then but um, his stuff is actually educational. Mm-hmm. Like Blippi did a visit an airport and was showing the kids all the different parts of an airplane and how they fly. And I'm what am I? You know, I'm an amateur aviation enthusiast, and I'm listening to this thing. And I so I lean over the the baby's shoulder. I'm like, wow, this is a uh, he's this is good stuff. Like he's accurate. Like this is all correct. Yeah, what he's doing. So as annoying as Blippi is, okay, you can watch Blippi. Well, it's almost like it, Blue's Clues was really annoying. Yeah, but they there was Blue's Clues was educational. Yeah, the crap that the Paul brothers do, there's no redeeming value. Not, or the kids that are playing with toys, there's nothing good for them. No, nothing. No, I, I remember when I was young, like, like kind of like what you alluded to with your parents. Like my parents told me, look, everything you see on TV, it's fake. Yeah, except for the news. Right, and well, well, now, <laughs> nowadays, nowadays, my message is: everything you see on TV is fa- fake. It, yeah. Everything, especially yeah. the news. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, but yeah. you know, they 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 watch that, um, and th- they're still young, so they haven't quite gotten the connect. Like they're not into the Instagram and all that stuff. I, I, um, I'm dreading that part because I, I got two girls. I'm dreading the day they find Instagram. Yeah. Because these girls that make money on Instagram, it's basically just a flesh show. Yeah. I'm like, oh. Did you ever see, and what they don't get is they, like, there's the filters that are applied. Yeah. So they'll see some girl who's an Instagram model that looks a certain way, and they think, well, I don't look that way, so I'm not good enough. Well, First of all, there it's essentially a professional photo shoot. They don't look that way, right? And then there's filters. Did you have you seen the Joe Rogan where he applies the filters and looks like a girl? No, I didn't. Yeah, like he applies all these on his daughter's Instagram. He gets on there and applies all these filters, and he looks like a girl. And it was legit. Yeah, like he looked and he could speak into it and talk, and it it made him look like a twenty year old girl. Right, and he could say whatever he wanted to say. And be and it's like this is this is pretty creepy that that someone can do this, and then so you're setting, you know, talk about like an awkward stage in life anyway. Okay, yeah. And then, middle school, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's hell. And then so it's an awkward stage in life, and then you're going to go and say, oh well, this is, you know, this is the standard to which you're going to judge yourself by. Well, not only that, but it's also like. For the boys that are looking at it, mm-hmm. they're going to try and hold their future mates or whatever you want to call. It. Well, she looks like that. Yeah. Well, I want someone who looks like that. Right. Well, that doesn't exist. Right. That's a unicorn, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like Giselle doesn't look like Giselle. Right. Uh, you know. With, I mean, but before Instagram, though, girls, I, I can I can hear women in my ear saying, "Well, before Instagram, it was, you know, Cosmo or mm-hmm. Elle magazine or." Or Vogue or whatever, and those you know those were the two dimensional pictures. Yeah, that were providing the. But you could just the, the not magazine. look at that magazine. Well, I mean, you could not look at Instagram, but the but problem is though, you have an account on Instagram to talk with your friends. Yeah, and you know Instagram puts up the influencer because mm-hmm. you know the girl that's now in the bikini and everything is an influencer for a brand. Yep. So she, it's an ad. And so now the ad ends up in their feed, and now they follow yeah. 
the influencer. Mm-hmm. And then they see more influencers and more. Yeah. So now they're getting fed more of this stuff. Yeah. And so are the boys. Mm-hmm. And look, let's not mix words. Either. I mean, there are male influencers showing off the pack, the, the pecs and the six yeah. pack abs and got the, you know, the, the, the speedo swimsuit and all the line. Like, and those are filters as well. Yeah. And it's, it's going to give, it's going to give the boys the, the same kind of, uh, uh, what's the, the demoralizing impact about their own body? Yeah, right. I mean, it's it's re- more readily accessible for these kids on the phone. It's like mm-hmm. right in their hand all the time. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, bo- you could say boys had Playboy magazines, or you know, when I when I was older, or when I was in my twenties or teens, it was Maxim magazine. Oh yeah. That Which actually, true. when it first started, was pretty good, and that just yeah. turned to crap. And, and, and then some people are saying, what about GQ and men's health? To be honest with you, I think most men, I think if you looked at the, the readership of like GQ or uh, men's health, mm-hmm. I think it, it was probably a lot less than what how many men, women were reading Vogue. Uh, in fact, Vogue turned into, has now Teen Vogue. Yeah. Uh, L magazine, yeah, but th- but those Cosmo. magazines weren't in your pocket, sending an alert every time, every time you're f- yeah. they posted something new. It. It, it wasn't an interactive thing. You read the magazine, yeah, it was there, and there's a picture, but it wasn't constantly constantly there to interact with you. Whereas these apps are designed to make you want to interact with them. Right. At, At least the th- magazines had words in them too. Yeah, At least learn to read while you get your yeah. your. Your body shame on, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like work on your reading comprehension yeah. skills. You know, get that recipe that you always wanted. Yeah. While you learn to hate yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, and then it smells, and it smells like perfume, right? Of so, course. Well, well, yeah. The men's ones always had the men's cologne. Oh yeah. And, yeah. The women's had the perfumes in it, and, and I, I, the I, I just. Like, my brother had three boys. Like, he's got one girl who's about the same age as my oldest. So they're still in elementary school. But he had three boys. Like, mm-hmm. fit, and they lived in a little bit more rural area. Now, they still had phones with the smartphones and stuff. But I definitely feel like they, my, like, my brother wouldn't let them on Facebook. Didn't let them get an Instagram account. Yeah. And he monitored their phones. Mm-hmm. And I'm probably going to do the same thing with my kids. Yeah. Because they ended up, as they, they're, Two of the three are adults. One's going to be an adult next year for the most part, voting age at least. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they're fairly well grounded. Yeah, and and I think a lot of it has to do with they weren't on Facebook, they weren't on Instagram, mm-hmm. they weren't on Twitter. Yeah, like they didn't experience just the the pure S show. Oh that yeah, those three things are. Yeah. And I know my girls are going to give me flack for it when they get older then I'm not going to have them on those platforms and I know a lot of people say well you should give them access to them and teach them about what they really are right. rather than take it away from them yeah and I can see both an I can see both sides of the coin because you don't want the kid to be weird you know like if everyone has it and they don't now everyone has Facebook I don't um so I did at one point, gave it up for Lent, never went back, deleted the account. Um, but there are other people who, like, but then I'm also 42 years old. Right. And I can be the old curmudgeon that doesn't have Facebook. Because um, we're of the generation where, you know, we know, like, what is it, the Zennial or whatever, that, you know, grew up with technolo- comfortable with technology, but grew up at a time where it wasn't so pervasive. Right. Don't can are can not without it. Right. Exactly. Now, these kids, like, that's how their whole social interaction, everything is, is, is built. And you can say all you want, well, oh, go play with the kids. Well, the kids aren't playing. You know, I drive past the, the middle school and high school bus stop in the morning, and they're all buried in their phones. Right. And I drive past these, these dudes, I'm like, wow, there's, you know, there's that pretty girl standing there, and you're buried in your phone. Like, go talk to her, man. But, you know... Do you remember that? Do you, I don't, do you ever see the movie The? Um, I want to say it was The Intern. It was the movie with 
Is that Vince, De Niro and... So, no, not that one. So, maybe I'm not thinking of the right one. So it was the one with Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson, and they went and did an internship with, at Google. To win an... In, yeah. And there was a line it, where one of the kids, he was, like, super techie, mm-hmm. of course, working at Google, and he's sitting there on his phone. And as a group, they were working hard at night, and Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson, being the savvy vets that they are, they said, look, let's go, let's go have some dinner. So they go to this, uh, I believe it was like a Korean barbecue place. And Vince Vaughn, the dummy of the group, tech-wise, mm-hmm. starts speaking Korean. or He's either Korean or Chinese to the host, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, where should we go? And the guy's like, you want to go to this club? He's like, all right, we're going to that club. Takes the kids, they go to the club, turns out to be like a like a burlesque dancing club. Mm-hmm. Like So like it's like a club, a nightclub with a bar and everything. But there's some, you know, the girls dancing in the cages yeah. and whatnot or whatever. And so they're having some fun. At the end of the night, they're out in somewhere in California with a nice view. And the one kid's texting on his phone. And Owen Wilson goes, just pick your chin up five, you know, two feet mm-hmm. or two inches. You can see the whole world out there. Mm-hmm. So like the in the metaphor is like the kid was in his phone thinking that's where his life that's where yep. all, meanwhile he's having one of the best nights of his life with friends yeah dancing boozing it up whatever just having a good time and so absorbed and in he's the device. so absorbed in his phone yeah it was like the, just you know two inches up yeah the whole world's right there for you yep and a lot of these kids never get that message no and and I you know so like we'll I'll go to the kids games and and their swim meets and whatever and i want to get some video for them for the grandparents and pictures and all that for them to to look back on and for us but i'll go like say a swim meet and they're each going to swim in you know uh five different events i'll get video and pictures of a couple events and then i put it down because you lose perspective you like you lose the whole experience when you're even when you're trying to just take video through the phone, you're focusing on that five inch screen, right? And you're missing everything that's going on around it. So I try to say, you know what? I'll get some, like if I go to an air show, I'll get some pictures. But you know what? I want to experience that jet zinging over my head with without looking at it through a phone. Yeah, because that video when you play it back. It comes nowhere close to what you actually saw. Right. You know, it's, you know, the, you know, sometimes you go to the, to, you know, to the, when Andrews has their, their, uh, their air shows every couple of years, like they're flying so low and fast, like you can smell the exhaust. Yeah. And when you just miss all of that, that feeling when you're trying to watch it through, and then you watch the video later and it's, it's terrible. Yeah. You know, so I try to do that with the kids, like to get to say, you know, set the example for them like hey i'm i, I want to be here watching you i don't i don't care about getting a picture of it yeah and i think i mean that's a, another huge important thing yeah our kids are fairly young right mm-hmm. and i think we've been able to learn like i was able to learn that lesson for my brother about not having them on their phones all the yeah. time and but he and his wife are also not on their phones all the time yeah Like, they're not showing that example. Like, I think there's, like, the generation just... It's not a generation, but, like, the year... Like, ten parents that are 10 years older than us. Yeah. Maybe 15. We're on the phones. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. In their 50s. Always on the phone. Mid-50s, always on the phone. Um, And that's where those kids are now coming from. Right. Mom and dad are always on the phone. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad are always on the Facebook. Yeah. Mom and Dad, even if you're just reading your news feed, well, and that's your RSS feed. You're always yeah. looking down at the phone, and, or you're and, texting. Yep, and that's one of the things that. So I have a Kindle or Fire tablet, whatever it is, you know, to read off of. And, but the kids just see me looking at a device. Right. They don't know that I'm actually reading a book. So, now when I was growing up. My father always had a book. My mother always had a book. There were books everywhere. Like, they'd give them away. There were so many books in the house, just bookshelves full of books. 
and they'd pack them up and they'd give them away. Like when they moved um, after my dad retired, like there were just boxes and boxes of books that there's just, you know, Dean Koontz and yeah. if they were just, you know, re- regular novelists or books about history. My mother had a ton of cook cookbooks that she kept. She never got rid of them. But just tons of books. I, and I remember being around it. So I'd like my kids to see me be around books, but, you know, I can go buy a book or I can have the Libby app and get it for free on my on my oh. tablet. Yeah. So that's kind of the thing, like, am I setting an example? The the the, the six year old doesn't know that I'm reading a book. He just sees me with a tablet and says, Oh well dad's been on the tablet all day. So that's fine for me. Well then and, or you get the Kindle credits. Yeah. From Amazon when you don't take the next day shipping. Mm-hmm. You get a two dollar Kindle credit sometimes. Yeah. And so, you know, every once in a while, your Kindle credits add up to seven, eight bucks, and that's enough for a book. Mm-hmm. All not, but I got to read it on my Kindle. Yeah. Like, it's not, they're not going to send you a hard copy. Right. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, and like I said, you might be reading your news feed, your RSS feed. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not reading your Facebook feed or whatever. Yeah. But your kids don't know that. They see you looking down at the, at the phone. Right. Like, one of the things I've done, or I've tried to do in the past two, three years, is at dinner time, mm-hmm. I put my phone on the counter. Yeah, I don't take it to the table anymore because yep. I know I'll be tempted by it. Well, have you ever uh, watched? Um, oh, what is it? It's that guy's name. He wrote some leadership books. Um, I forget the guy's name, but he does a. He was interviewed by you know about devices and young. And one of the things is we lose connections with one another because like you go to a waiting room, you don't have to. So first of all, I'm not going to complain about this when you're waiting for the doctor's office, like. You have your phone, like, oh, I can play baseball on my phone. Mm-hmm. I don't mind this two-hour layover at the airport. I can right. just play games on my phone. Who cares? Like, it, it kills time. But you're missing that opportunity to interact with people. Because you're sitting in a waiting room, uh, you know, strike up a conversation with whoever. The, at the airport, waiting for the flight to come at the gate and just start talking to, to someone about random stuff. Think about, and, though, when someone does that, though, nowadays... Sometimes though, I think when someone does it, I think they're kind of I think they're kind of strange. Yeah. Oh, so why, I, why are you just talking to me? Like I that? must have talked to me written on my forehead. <laughs> Depending, it doesn't matter how angry I try to look. People just, I guess, I mean, I guess I'm just magnetic. They they gra- they gravitate. They want to talk about stuff, and I don't mind. Like I'll, I'll talk. You know, I talk to all kinds of people. You know, at work anyway. So I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you're nothing right. compared to what I'm dealing with normally. So, um, but you lose that connection with, with people. But then what it really comes in is at, so what this guy was talking about was, uh, was at meetings and you sit there at the meeting and everyone has their phone on the desk. So if I have my phone here on the table, is the meeting more important or is my phone more important? Right. And that phone goes off and I'll be at work and we all get the same email and everyone's, Oh, what's the email? Dude, it's the same thing. Like everyone, like, it's it's some email from HR about some form you have to fill out. We all know, but everyone has to look at it. Right. You know, so I don't, you know, make a policy where, hey, during this meeting, your phone stays in your pocket, don't want to see it. Um, but we have it on our watch now. So <laughs> well, <laughs> look at your watch. Or it's, or it's, some of it I think is a little bit in the subconscious though. So like, for example, if you look at your phone and you see that little notification bubble for your email. Mm-hmm. And it says like one, two, three, four, whatever. Yeah. For some people, if the little notification bubble says one, they have to get rid of it. Yeah. I've got to look at it. I've yeah. got to I've got to make that one go away. Mm-hmm. And then you've got other people who will say like 459. Yeah. So I'm kind of mid-grade. <laughs> I am currently at 890. <laughs> see, I, I'm, I'm the person where if I see the bubble it says one. You got to look at I it. I got to look at it. Yeah. But now here's the thing though. If I put it in my pocket and I don't look at it, and my my wife, it, she she yells at me for this constantly. That I I turn I turn the notification sounds and vibration off. Mm-hmm. So if I put it in my pocket, or I'm in the car driving, I don't know I'm getting it. Yeah. And if I don't know I'm getting it, I don't have to look at it. Yeah. So for me, it's a matter of if I see the notification. I got to look at it, but she mm-hmm. gets, she gets mad at me because if it's her calling or her texting me and it's something important, right. Then like, you're missing it completely. Like, Hey, we forgot this at home. Can you bring it? Or, yeah. Hey, 
you know, I'm at the, I'm at the hospital. Why can't you be here? <laughs> yeah. I'm dying right now. Why aren't you here? <laughs> right. and, uh, she's like, you're not going to get that message. I said, right. But, you know, I guess I could set the phone up to only notify me when she contacts me. If I was smart enough to figure that out. Yeah. There are but, ways with like, well, I know you're more of an Android guy, but yeah. there are ways with favorites. I'm sure Android has the same thing where I'm you, sure can, it does. you can silence it except for your favorites. Um, so, you know, there, there's ways to do it. But but like if I don't see the notification, at the end of the day, I could have 20 emails. And it doesn't bother me. Like, I'll, I'll look at the 20 emails when I've got time. But if I feel or see or see the, or anything with the notification, mm-hmm. I got to look at it. Yeah. It drives me nuts. Um. Yeah, so I can let it go. I don't care. Yeah. Generally. Um now my wife is more the one that's gonna wanna look at it, I think. She might she might disagree. But uh I can I can look like I'm sometimes I wish I didn't even have the damn thing. You know. Uh <laughs> especially the work one. That one can can go F itself. <laughs> but um I just wonder for the kids, getting back to them. Yeah. Like, this generation is going to have it. Like, their entire life is going to be digitized, like, d- digital. Right. And I, I almost wish they do it. So there are kids who have a social media footprint before they're even born. When mom and dad put up the thing from the uh, ultrasound. Right. So before that child has even been born, there's a picture of him. Of the ultrasound has even don't even know what this good whether it's gonna be a boy or a girl at this point well they might not know till they're they decide <laughs> according to people now but <laughs> that's a different podcast. yeah um <laughs> you should probably <laughs> stay away from that one yeah, i probably won't do that one <laughs> but um again like they didn't even like it's just a clump of cells at that point like there's a little the little heartbeat and some people are putting video up so there's video of this child before they're even born and then all these thoughts and people saying congratulations and all these this stuff going on and they have no choice in the matter right none and to me it i never i, I don't we never put that stuff on facebook i don't think um for any of the kids because we didn't want you know to me it's just not fair to them and when i deleted my facebook account that i did have there were a bunch of pictures of the of the kids when they were young you know babies i'm like you know, the whole thing's going um i had other copies of those pictures and it, was, it wasn't like i was getting rid of the only picture that i had of right. of the kids you uploaded from your phone anyway. yeah but i just got rid of the whole thing because they had no choice and now there are people that are making facebook accounts for their kids before they're born yeah I'm like this is kind of strange because you're that child isn't controlling the, the stuff that goes on there you know it's just a weird thing like here's my kid and i kind of look at that like well that, that's just you know a weird kind of like you're doing this for someone that has no choice no control over it no no input as to what gets put on there and it's almost like you know the embarrassing pic- picture like when you're a little kid you're naked and you you know sure. New girlfriend comes over. Your dad's like, "Oh, this is him when he's naked." Uh, you know that sort of thing. Uh, Apple might get you thrown in jail for that now. Yeah, because they're scanning all your photos. Yeah, but but here's the here's the thing. You you show that picture to that one person. You're embarrassed by that one person. Well, now you have a whole Facebook page of all the dumb, awkward stuff you've done growing up. And who, you know, do you want that out there? Yeah, I, so like. We all post pictures of our kids at some point. Now, I think most people, though, like no one I know has a Facebook account for their kids. So it's not like you can tag the kid or you're putting the kid's name out there. Yeah. However, knowing what we know now about how Facebook can track everything, like, for example, even you without Facebook, because your wife has Facebook, mm-hmm. I've got a Facebook account. My wife has a Facebook account. Your phone number is in our contacts. Yeah. It can now track you. Yeah. Even though you have no Facebook account. Yep. Now imagine what it's going to do with these kids. Mm -hmm. It can now, it will, like Facebook and Amazon and all these other prices will know more about your kids than anybody else. Yeah. So if they ever do create an account, they can just start marketing stuff to them right away. Uh, Because they're going to know that, oh, hey, that kid's in the baseball. Or or influencing them to vote 
mm-hmm. a certain way. Yeah. Do things a certain way. Mm-hmm. Hey, you need to go to Burger King instead of McDonald's. Yeah. You need a burger instead of pizza. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to put photos of burgers in yep. front of you all day long. Yep. Coke instead of Pepsi. Right. Yeah. So. And, and people don't. People are like, oh, well, that, people still have free will and choice. Mm. Yeah, you don't know how the brain works. Yeah. The brain, when it sees pictures of burgers and burgers and burgers and fries, burgers and burgers and burgers and fries. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Now your brain starts thinking it wants a burger. Oh, yeah. Even, even if you don't eat meat. Yeah. Your brain's like, oh, my God, my mouth is watering every time I see a burger. It's it's Pavlog's dog. Oh, yeah. That nobody remembers that. Yeah. It's just, a, instead of the bell, it's pictures in front of your face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so my boss will watch uh, on his, the TV in his office. He'll have the um, Food Network on. Mm-hmm. They're doing diners, drives, and drive. And, and I'm looking at this stuff. I love that show. Buddy. And I'm like, so, you know, I get up early in the morning, work out eat early in the morning so by about 10 o'clock you know i eat breakfast at six sometimes you know 5 30 6 o'clock so by 10 11 o'clock i'm pretty hungry right and but i'm trying to hold off because i don't want to eat lunch at the lunch i brought in it at 11 right. i'm gonna be there till four or five and be starving without fail i will run through a drive through <laughs> but i'm sitting there and i'm watching this thing and it's pulled pork it's these giant hamburgers like a hamburger stuffed with cheese and bacon and then with <laughs> bacon on it and and i'm what and like you can't even fit it in your mouth and there's grease and french fries i'm like dude you gotta turn this off right <laughs> gonna watch anything but this <laughs> she's like well you just leave the office I, said, I could do that too <laughs> yep. um Hi, Captain. <laughs> but yeah so like i'm thinking to myself like oh yeah i'll uh you know but you're right like and then i'm driving home like man we go out to dinner, and I'm like, you know what? I, I have a hankering for a, a greasy hamburger. Yep. And it all started with that. But when you're talking with kids whose brains aren't fully developed yet, so, you know, and, and I know you've watched some of those, uh, what's the document? You refer to it a lot. Um, Social Dilemma. Yeah. Yep. But, like, when you look at someone's brain, like, when they get a like, they get a dopamine hit. Not now, just them, us, too. Yeah. It, it, it works on adults. Yeah. So, but we're adults, we kind of understand, but these ki- these are kids who are getting addicted to that dopamine. It's a drug. Yep. There are drugs that people take recreationally and, you know, for medical purposes that increase dopamine in your brain. So now you're subjecting them to this thing to get likes and then status is attached to followers. My kids, well, the little guys with this podcast, ask me how many followers we have. Right. And I'm like, oh, it's like a million. <laughs> right. it's almost a million i want to tell my kids zero yeah <laughs> i said nobody listens yeah, to us right. nobody i was like and you want to know i'm not far off yeah <laughs> but i'm like listen because my, my like my, my oldest was like you have you have people that listen to you and follow you i was like not really yeah. like it's 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 just me and me and mr mike talking to each other yeah. i'm pretty sure into uh, a microphone yeah <laughs> like, i don't i think as many people are listening to us right now in this room that will listen to us outside of this room yeah. when I, we post this thing <laughs> yeah. it's funny the way she gave me that look like uh-huh <laughs> loser right right <laughs> how do you not have any followers how long right. have you been doing this <laughs> five months you have no followers it's like <laughs> why are you still doing it <laughs> the little, like, little kids like like shit i've got 30 followers <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the kid down the street from in middle school's got 100 yeah already beaten us how many friends do you have i don't know <laughs> right. three or four or it's like i'm sure my kid one day is gonna be like how many facebook friends do you have and be like well facebook says i have 400 friends I I interact with three of them. See, I don't know if in I real know, life. <laughs> and when I had Facebook, I was and I was like, I don't. Who are these people? Like, I don't. Do I know four hundred people? If I had to, if I had to put, let's see, it infantry companies like one fifty. If I had to get like, if I had to put together, like a a an out of infantry element to to defend this, I couldn't put an infantry a platoon together, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not talking I, about people that know what they're doing. I'm just talking about like raw bodies. Yeah, no, I, it's 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 really not like everyone I know is like on the neighborhood group chat, <laughs> so, right, <laughs> right. And the, like the people I talk to the most are in or in that yeah or in that text text group, <laughs> which I keep trying to I keep trying to move everyone over to Telegram and like no no I'm like it's better yeah 
I'm trying to lead horses to water, and they're all telling me to fuck off. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll go. Like, you You're know, already there. Yeah. You've got an account. But there's nobody on it. Half the people there, half the people are already there. <laughs> I actually, got, I got two of them on there the other day for the uh, FanDuel League. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just because uh, I was like, I'm tired of tired of having to create a brand new uh, SMS group. Yeah, for, for, for this stupid thing where we add one person. Mm-hmm. Like I just want to be able to add and subtract people as right. they come and go, and these messengers let you do that. SMS doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> garbage. <laughs> anyway, it does a whole other topic altogether. But I mean, the Facebook thing though, like the friends count. Mm-hmm. So once you get on Facebook, and this is this is the genius of Facebook because the more people they can get you to interact with, the more time you spend on it. Yeah. Well, so what they do is when you first get on there. The reason why they they ask you for your high school mm-hmm. and your hometown, your college. So you start. F- everyone that went to that school or hometown or college, they say, hey, this person's on Facebook. Yeah. And so I'd say like probably 100 of the people of the 400 I have on there that or that I'm friends with on there mm-hmm. were people I went to high school with. Right. 89 of them. I didn't talk to. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to offend it. Or I might have said hi in the hallway. And not that I'm not saying they're not good people, but look, I barely talked to you in high school. Or, right. hey, you were the one making fun of me because I was overweight. Yeah. But I got, I, I accept it. I don't want to seem petty. Yeah. So I accept it. Yeah. Right? I accept a friend, or I sent a friend request. Right. Or I scouted you out, and I saw that you're like a huge loser now. So <laughs> right. look at what I'm doing. and you're. <laughs> but it's just like. Now, so I'd say of the 400 people I've got listed as friends on there, 20 of them. Yeah. I, I've seen, I talked to and seen in real life. Yeah. Yeah. And then. The other, well, I will say this. The other ones, though, are people that don't live close, that mm-hmm. I want to keep in contact with. I want to see how they're doing. Yeah. I want to see pictures of their kids, their house. I want to see everything. I want to see that stuff. Like, they were good friends at one point, but because we live so far apart. Right. Uh, or just life takes you different places. Like, and you know, there, when I, you know, when I, uh, pulled the plug on it, you know, my wife would say, well, you know, aren't you going to miss some of these? I'm like, nah, not really. Now she's, f- you know, friends with a lot of my friends who were on there that I don't really talk to anymore, but I can still kind of keep up with what they're doing. Cause she'll tell me like, Oh, such and such had a baby. I'm like, Oh, that's right. cool. Right. Like g- g- great job. You know, you had a baby. Um, yeah. There but, is some value in it. Yeah. But I, you know, the thing is, like, if I just go and, and get on there and send, you know, just hit the like button to your baby, like, is that? They're giving them that dopamine hit. Yeah. Is but it does sincere? It give, does it do anything for you? What, get, <laughs> sending the like? Not for me. Yeah. But um, now I do have Instagram, I'm, I'm going to say, and and I'll see, like, I put a post up the other day. I was like, oh, I got to look at all these people that the little little red thing comes on when you got a, a like or whatever. I'm like, oh, that's cool. 96 people like this. But I don't have Instagram, but I did have Twitter. And Twitter, for me, was one of the most toxic places on earth. So I have I do have Twitter, and I use it to follow some sports teams and stuff. But it is, you're right, it, it the blue check mafia. Oh. And the stuff that people put on. And the thing is, it's kind of an echo chamber because they've, they've done some studies where and it looked at who's on Twitter, and it it's it leans real heavy left. So people that are on there, that's their worldview. They think that everyone is, and it's like, yeah, you're kind of off base on a lot of this stuff because you're just hearing your own thoughts over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Twitter's a it's a dumpster fire. Like it's just it's even, it's awful. Even people in their own echo chamber are still nasty to each other. Yeah, like there there's also, I mean, there are some people on the right on Twitter as well. And mostly for the people on the left to berate. Yeah. Um, but there's a little bit of an echo chamber there as well for both left and right. Now, yeah. don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm not saying that it's not a majority left on that thing because it most certainly seems like it. Yeah. And they're like, well, you can go somewhere else. Well, yeah, they went somewhere else. It was called Parlor, and they took it off the internet. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> yeah. Not that I was – I mean, look – I. For a while, I was creating an account on everything, yeah, just to see what was going on. I had a, I had Parlor for a while because I just wanted to see what what was up with it, and then mm-hmm. some of the, there were some of the the, uh, um, 
gun people had some some tax stuff that they were putting on there that they put on parlor because the other platforms had censored it. So they're like, we're going to go over here. And, um, like Tim Kennedy went over to, to, uh, to, to parlor and had some stuff. And mainly it, he, he wasn't doing anything crazy. It was just stuff that wasn't appreciated on the, on the other side yeah. that he could put on there. And I'm like, there's, there's nothing offensive here about what this guy's doing. No. Um, but he still maintained his presence in the other, in the yeah. other platforms. Well, they say, I mean, a lot of times they say the people on the right won't co- they won't uh, coalesce as easily as the people on the left because it's a little bit in the nature of the people on the right to question mm-hmm. a lot of things versus taking things as they are. Yeah. So even for people on the right, they're going to question it and be like, oh, I don't know. Um, but on par- so I went over to Parler. And one of the things I heard about it was how anti-Semitic some of the stuff was. Mm-hmm. And like when you first go on Parlor, you remember like Tom from MySpace? Yeah. When you go on Parlor, it's like the head of Parlor like at the Dan time. Bongino. Something that, <laughs> well, no, before that, before, yeah. before he even got involved, it's like yeah. another guy mm-hmm. who was like super Christian dude, whatever, yeah. or something like that. Well, he was also pretty anti-Semitic, mm-hmm. which also led to other people that were anti-Semitic on there. Yeah. And so for a while there, before, before the whole thing, Twitter thing happened, um, where the right was there was like a mass exodus to go over there. Um, I don't think people really understood how much anti-Semitic stuff was on that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I I think after a while, after parlor got more people, they try to like squash it down a little bit. (laughs) Like, Whoa, wait a minute. Like some some of the stuff was like super anti-Semitic. Like it was, it was bad. Um, And I was like, I I can't hang out here. I got, I got to get out of here. This is bad. Yeah. Um, I I think I, I never made one single post, but I don't post a lot of stuff on anything anyway. Um, I've never sent a tweet. Um, I used to be big in it. I, I looked at Twitter, Twitter. Did you have a blue check? No, I didn't. What are we going to verify? I don't know that you're you. They don't need that to know me. I'm Dumb not, Idea Podcast. But this is before the Dumb Idea Podcast. This is, <laughs> this is before those days. This is, um, but like I would go there and, I mean, I would tweet, retweet, although mostly I, would, I like, I would comment quote tweet or whatever Mm -hmm. because i noticed like when i when i tweeted nobody cared right like i wasn't getting my dopamine hits right but when i went and owned the libs or own or own the patriots (laughs) when i went own own the tea party i went own the tea party (laughs) you get your you get your dopamine hits with the hearts the little little likes and the and the quote tweets it's like yes (laughs) and i was like you know what after about six months of being on there uh because i had created a second account for that I was like, you know, I'm, I, I deleted it outright, everything. So the only, like, I do have an account on Twitter that I haven't looked at in probably six, seven months. Mm-hmm. It's so I can follow the Ravens and the Orioles. Yeah. And like, uh, some of the, the local sports, the one Oh five, seven guys, mm-hmm. I can follow some of them. So like, um, just so I can get my, I can get sports news. Cause that's one thing, like trying to get like sports news. It's kind of tough. Yeah. Like, I, unless you go, unless you go to ESPN, but ESPN, everything's got a, a racial slant to it now. Yeah. Everything. Like, yeah. I, can't, I can't deal with this. Yeah. I follow for, on Twitter. I follow a lot of the local governments and police departments and stuff. Cause they'll, they'll put yourself like such and such road. They'll tweet out this road's closed. Yeah. Like that can be useful. Can um, be. you know, useful information when you're traveling or, or whatever. But then, then you look at the comments and it's like all the trash people on Twitter. Comment. Oh yeah. They're like F that guy. Like what you, <laughs> There's a backup on 50. It's because Hogan's doing all the stuff to the roads. <laughs> or, or all these people aren't local and not they're not driving right. on the correct roads. Right. Oh my god. Right. Or or uh or you know uh you know Mayo Roads closed for a fatal collision accident like F him, he deserved it. Like <laughs> Jesus <laughs> He deserved to die. What? <laughs> like when, like when like when Rogan got podcast when Rogan got a uh, uh, COVID the other day, like the 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 liberals were like, he deserves to go to hell. <laughs> like what? Right? It's like, and then they were like, he he took he took ivermectin. He took horse pills. Oh God! Yeah, he's yeah. gonna die. <laughs> I can't believe he took it. He. You saw that article in Rolling Stone where the do- the doctor said the hospitals in Missouri were overflowing with ivermectin overdoses. Right. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was debunked and they had to write a retraction because yeah. the doctor hadn't worked in the hospital in two months. Right. Yeah. They didn't see the retraction, though. Uh, well, yeah, because they print the retraction, like, minuscule yeah. on, 
you know, page 42. By the way, the, oh, and, and, and that whole story, it's like CNN ran it. MSNBC, Joy Reid oh, went with it. Yeah. And it's like, like I, the hospital system that the guy was talking about mm-hmm. literally had to put out a statement and yeah. said they've had zero ivermectin overdoses yeah. cases in their hospital. Right. Zero. <laughs> like the guy went from they were, he was saying they were overrun with them. This hospital said we had none. Well, yeah. And, and the picture they showed of people lined up. Yeah. Now, this is September. And I think Joe Rogan came down with, with COVID like at last the week. end was, of August. It was last week. Yeah. 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 So they're showing this and the picture of the people lined up and they're saying gunshot victims aren't getting treated. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I used to work in a hospital. There's a system called the triage system. Yeah. All right. Anyway, let's not get into facts because facts are so inconvenient no, no, sometimes. Facts aren't good. So this picture of people lined up are wearing like jackets, like heavy winter coats. <laughs> winter, yeah. It's like, did, did you even like, no, did you, anyone look at this? Did anyone look at this at all? <laughs> No, because you got to shit on Joe Rogan. They didn't fact check that guy at all. Yeah. Like, Rolling Stone, all they had to do was call the hospital to verify any of it. Right. Do you think they did that? No. no. They didn't They didn't even make a phone call. Not even an attempt. No. Like, send an email, maybe? No. no. To, like, the customer service account that no one, like, that replies back, like, don't reply to this email, it's not monitored. <laughs> By the way, MSNBC's credibility, Brian Williams works there. Y- yeah. The guy who, wasn't he, he was on a helicopter. In, in the Iraq War or Afghanistan War, one of the two. Yeah, that's what he said. Which he was never there. Right. Yeah. Credible right. guy. Right. And the, both pilots got killed and he had to land it. Had to land it. <laughs> just took over. He just, you know what? He just, I'm, I'm going to fly it, guys. I got, I got this. it. Don't worry about it. Hey, can someone get on this, uh, yeah. get on this 60 gun? I, I, you know, I can't handle that and fly at the same time. You know what? I will. I will. Never mind. I'm going to fly and shoot some people. Got this, guys. Yeah. Yeah. So much credibility. You're bleeding a little bit. <laughs> But yeah, I that that story was just just completely <laughs> ridiculous, and the the medicine is you like they made it seem like, you know, it's it's a, it's a veterinary medicine, right? No, it won a Nobel Prize for its use in humans. Well, and in Japan, I believe it was probably two weeks ago. Uh, the the head of the medical association in Japan actually said it was a a wonder drug. For humans, because mm-hmm. they still don't know what else this drug can do. Yeah, never mind what it won the Nobel Peace Prize for. Yeah. But there's, in fact, going back, I believe, a month ago, Oxford University finally said they're doing a five thousand person trial mm-hmm. for the effects of ivermectin with COVID patients. Yeah, so an actual legit trial. Yeah, um, that's a whole other topic because the whole thing of why ivermectin wasn't looked at before. I think has to do with some of the emergency youth authorization for the vaccines. Yeah. I don't think they would have been able to get the emergency youth authorization if, if, there, there, was if a, there was another viable treatment. Yeah. But that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. I mean, going back to like with the kids and social media, I mean, I just, I see how adults are affected just by not just, not even just social media, but news, mm-hmm. like the news that's not news or yeah. the shows that they watch with so- certain plot lines or, um, but the, the social media companies I think are the worst about it because they do target kids. Mm-hmm. They know kids love the technology. They know yeah. kids love the phones. Well, just watching my three-year-old run a phone, like he knows where apps are and he, he like, like he, ha- I have some apps on the phone, like for him, like there's this baby balloon pop game. And it just balloons go up the screen, and he pops them with his hand fingers. But he gets to it, and he he can hit the microphone and say YouTube Blippy, yep. and it comes up like the, it's cool to watch them do it. Yeah. But kids are good at manipulating these things anyway. You know, um, yeah. they could. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I learned how to run. My my dad had one of the component stereos that had the the head unit and a record player and a CD player that was you know the bigger than a shoebox and held one disc right. <laughs> this had a little tray that came out and you put it in and it would go back in um and i knew how to put like select the different sources and do and adjust the equalizers when i was you know eight or nine years old right so kids are always gonna that's part of what kids they manip they explore their environment and they figure out how things work it's so different though because it's targeting it targets their brain yeah 
to make them feel a certain way. Yeah, and it, the, the stereo didn't like the stereo with the equalizer doesn't make me feel a certain way. No, like, it makes me feel proud that I learned how to do it. Yeah, but it doesn't keep coming back day after day after day. Right, it doesn't make rem- sure I feel bad about myself. It doesn't remind you it's there. It's like the dip, the, dip, the, the the magazine and Instagram. Right. The magazine you can eventually you're gonna it's gonna end up in the bathroom. Right, and then from there it's gonna end up in the trash or in a collection of box with other old magazines and it's not going to ding every time it wants you to look at it well it's like what they said about kid i mean it's harder to be a kid nowadays because the bullies the once you leave school the bullies are still there yeah right they're still there online to yep. bully you like you can't like at least when we went to school we were there from what nine to two nine to three yeah and when we left the problems went with it yeah for the most part unless you have the problems at home but what you know what i mean yeah like now it's 24 hours a day on your phone yeah that these bullies and these kids going to get to you in middle yep. school. Like for people that went to middle school and knew it sucked, guess what? It sucks even more now. Yeah. And I guess like I said, the original topic of, you know, I, like I got two little girls, you know, even though I don't want them to feel like they're missing out or get made fun of because they don't have Instagram or Facebook or mm-hmm. Twitter or whatever. I think at that point you should, like, for me, I might have to just say, look, I got to be an adult here. Yeah, and just say you're not having them. Yeah, no, I agree. Because for I, I for wanna, their own mental health, yeah. and they'll maybe they'll they're going to hate me for a while. Well, the thing is, they're they're first of all, they're going to be teenagers at some point anyway. They're going to hate you regardless, right? Right. <laughs> so add it to the list, right? At least, I mean, at least this way, they won't hate me and hate themselves. Yeah, right. They'll just hate me. Yeah, and I'm fine with that because when they once they f- get through the the rough years of being a team, maybe when they get back to 2021, 20, they'll like me again. Yeah, when they re- turn back into human beings, right? Um. Yeah, and, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to go and say, oh, well, I don't want my kid to think he's weird, so I'm going to let him have, you know, um, unlimited access to social media. Really, I'd be happy if they never got into it at all. Yeah. Um, like I said, my brother's kid, my brother's older boys, they never had it. Yeah. And they don't care. Yeah. Like, now that they're in their 20s, like, two of them are in their 20s and mm-hmm. one's 18, they just don't care. They yeah. don't want to have it. Yeah. And, I don't know, I, I think... I like not having it for myself because people say, did you see on Facebook? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Like, I do have a Facebook account. I look only for the stuff I want to look for. Yeah. I know there's other stuff there and I just scroll on by. Mm-hmm. The one good thing I like about Facebook though is the marketplace. Yeah. But I will, I'll be honest with you, like getting rid of Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I haven't looked at it in six months. I think it's, I, I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm almost, I'm, I'm almost ready to get rid of the my regular account. Mm-hmm. Get, I'll get rid of the sports news. Yeah, you know, I, it is what it is at that point. Yeah. Am I really missing that much? Probably not. I mean, I can, I can, I can uh, subscribe on an RSS feed to Bleacher Report mm-hmm. or ESPN for what that's worth. Yeah, and get my news that way, or I can do like Yahoo Sports and get my fantasy news that way. Mm-hmm. Whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, but I think I can ditch Twitter altogether and just lose that footprint. With Facebook, like I said, I use the marketplace. Like I got, yeah. I, I contacted that guy to put my TV up on the wall, mm. right? But I had to contact him through Facebook. Yeah, and and the little kids aren't, they're not using it for, not I should say little kids, but kids aren't generally using it for marketplace. They're they're on there because they're their whole social world. And I think what you said about the bullies, the bullies don't go anywhere. They're still with you. Yeah, that's such a huge thing because I mean I was a I was a fat little kid when I was growing up, and they were. It was funny because when I was a fat little kid. Um, up until everyone hit puberty, I was just picked on for being the fat. Well, then all of a sudden puberty hit and I became, you know, the big dude and all these little skinny guys are trying to lift weights to have the size that I just naturally had. So, you know, that all went away, but I don't think for girls that, that it does, you know, because there's a different standard for them. Um, I I don't know of any, when I was growing up, I don't know of any girl that was like, man, you know, I wish... I wish I could put on a solid fifty pounds. I don't think they're. <laughs> right. I don't think they're out there. They might be, right. and if they're trying to get, you know, if they're trying to get after it and get yoked and put some fifty pounds of muscle, like God bless. But I don't think that's really the at the forefront of the, you know, pubescent yeah. girls' mindset. No, you know? the, and they don't need social media for that crap. Any, anyway. yeah. I mean, um, the only the only thing I wonder is like, if they're not on the if they're not on the social media, the other kids are right. They right, can, they can still make fun of them. Yeah. Whether they're on it or not, they just well, won't know what's happening. Right. So it'll just so be now, people snickering at them. Right. And you're dependent on someone, someone's good nature to let you know what's going on. Right. And yeah. then, 
here's the other thing. If you if you completely restrict it from them, then do they go and they're gonna get see, it? seek it out? They're going to get it on their own. Yeah. Um, and I almost look at it like, you know, so so I have, you know, a few a few guns in the house and the boys, you know, and they're all locked up and safe. Um, but whenever one of the kids asks to see one, sure, get it out. I use that as an opportunity to teach them, you know, some firearm safety. You never pointed at anybody, finger off the trigger, all that stuff, completely supervised. But it removes the mystery from it. Right. So they're never looking for them because they know that any time they can ask me, Oh, Daddy, can I see your rifle? Yep, here it is. It's a, yeah. you know, this is what it, and it's very dangerous. And, you know, th- this is, if you if you ever find one, you know, if you're at a friend's house and a friend comes down downstairs, you know, you get out of there, tell an adult, that sort of thing. So it's kind of removing the forbidden fruit aspect from it. Yeah. Uh, and it can be monitored if, if, it's, if it's out there. So I think with social media, though, it's a little bit different in that I feel like, the need for the likes and whatnot comes from a lack of the feeling of belonging mm-hmm. or loneliness for that matter. Yeah. It's like I, the thing I hope from, for my kids is that throughout in their earlier years, before all of this happens, I hope they form some close friendships. Yeah. Because the close friendships will get them through. And, and I'm not saying like, I'm talking about like, and this is tough for kids, but I mean, and maybe for girls, but um, finding that group of friends that you can really trust and and, and mm-hmm. they'll have you like if someone's making fun of you, that's the like you got the friends that have your back, yeah, like for real, yeah, and they're not going to be the ones that kind of snicker behind your back as well, right? right. But that's not easily attainable, right? Because you got to hope there's some other kids out there that have that same mentality, right? Mm-hmm. And like I said, like just you know, we were talking about uh, you know, Babs in the other episode, yeah. right? Well, Babs raised a kid who's pretty crappy too. Yeah, and hopefully my kid doesn't think that Babs's kid is an awesome person. Right, puts faith in the wrong type of person mm-hmm. who ends up stabbing him in the back. Yeah, right. Kids do that all the time. I mean, that's what middle school, half of middle school is. Yeah, how many people did you stab in the back? That's how awesome you are, right? Yeah, it's, it's the how mean, bummer. how mean. We're, and the thing is, I see it. I've seen it already with my middle son. He, you know, he we're sitting there at dinner, and you know, he said that this girl called him called him fat, and that he was ugly. Mm-hmm. And I looked at him. Now I had a few cocktails on board, so <laughs> I was like, "Well, you should tell her to go f herself." Oh boy. And my wife, she's looking at me like. What did you just say? She's like, you know, he's going to do that. And if we get a phone call, and he'll get in trouble for that. I said, so I said, I had to walk by. But really, that in my head is like, but as an adult, as a confident adult, dude, f all. Like, right. I really don't care what you think about anything. So that's why I kind of had to reiterate, like, dude, do you, if someone's going to be mean to you, why do you care what they think? Well, it's also you know, like, like, even like my youngest one. She's like, I asked to play with some friends, and they said no. Like, we mean to no. Yeah. <laughs> like, they say no. And they, I don't know if her feelings get hurt, and you're like, oh, all right. Yeah. But it's like, how do you, I guess, I mean, you got to raise them to deal with some disappointment in life. Yeah. I mean, part but, of me really wants to say, well, then you punch that person in the mouth. Um, But you can't say that. Because that, <laughs> so, that would teach that person consequences. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm telling you, a lot of this nastiness on social media, it doesn't happen face to face because there's always a threat of getting punched in the mouth. Well, if it does happen face to face, the parents are, you know, the, the parents are probably reading it out loud, like mm-hmm. probably reading the social media, reading their response back. Yeah. And the kid thinks that this is what you say to someone. Yeah. Or they over or they overhear mom and dad talking like, oh, did you hear such and such? She was such a bitch. And I said, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And the kids are like, yeah, that's how I get back at people by, you know, talking shit on Facebook. So part of the problem, like what, what, what happens though when you're the. When you're the parent that's teaching your kid to be the nice kid, like you should always be nice. You should include everybody. Yeah. You know, if someone's lonely, go sit next to them. Yeah. If someone isn't isn't playing with anyone, go see if they want to play. Yeah. And and then what happens when your kid is that kid that doesn't have someone to play with, and they go ask to play, and someone and, and like two other kids say, "No, we're not going to play with you. We're going to do our own thing." Right. Like, hey, you know, yeah. they they learn like they learn through that. And it's tough. I mean, I mean, it is what it is, but. I don't know. Kids growing up these days, especially with the social media, it's tough. 
and unfortunately for both of us, we're going to, we're not that many years away from it. Oh no. And to be honest with you, I don't even know how to, like you said, I mean, I'd be more apt to say, would you, if someone said that to my, one of my daughters. Yeah. And it, especially if it was a boy that said yeah. it to her. Yeah. Like punch him in the face. Right. <laughs> I keep telling my wife, I'm, I'm, at some point I'm going to put my girls in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu class. Yep. Oh yeah. One of the and, and this this is kind of off topic, but one of the main reasons is because I want my daughters to know how to defend themselves mm-hmm. when they're on their back. Absolutely, and, and I know that sounds like a really bad thing to say. No, it's uh, but yeah. it's if some dude overpowers them, it somehow gets them on their back. Mm-hmm. I want them to be able to roll their hips up. Yep, put that dude's head and arm into a triangle. Yep. and suffocate the crap out of yep. them. Yep, and I don't care if they kill him. Yeah, like, and you know what if it happens at high school? Yeah, middle school. Pick the wrong one. Sorry, pick the wrong girl to pick on. Yeah. So I think in like another year. Oh, I've my oldest is going to jiu jitsu oh, class. I've, <laughs> I, I want to get my boys into it. It's just expensive, and um, it's it's a good workout for them too. And then the other thing is it gives them that confidence. But I don't need to be a black know. belt. I just need them to learn how to do that. Yeah, buck, <laughs> buck trap side and roll. That's right. That's but, all. I need. Look, four classes. <laughs> if you can't teach my kid how to do the four yeah. classes, you ain't worth the but, money. Yeah, and the thing is, like for girls especially, like like you know that's where they to defend to defend yourself and like you get someone someone who's like good at jujitsu you get that person on the ground like you just entered their world right. and you're about to lose badly well and, and you I, you can hear everyone saying well any dude would overpower a girl look yeah. grant another dude trained in jujitsu right could take my girl out right but if my girl's trained in jujitsu and your kid's just a schlub yeah she's gonna choke him out mm-hmm she, she she's going to bend. She's going to pull his head down. Yeah, tighten those legs around his neck with his arm trapped in there. Yep, and your boy's going to suffocate mm-hmm. because he ain't trained to deal with that shit. Yeah, he's so, probably going to be too stupid to tap out. Yeah. Now, granted, if she's going to, if she's, if the, if the one dude that's trying to get on, get on with her, yeah, is like the one of twenty five other dudes who's been training jujitsu <laughs> in this world. All right. Well, yeah. you know, it's tough luck. I'm still going to. I'll console her. I'll feel better. Yeah. But. If if it ain't one of those twenty five dudes, mm-hmm. and you're and and that boy's gonna suffocate, yeah. and possibly die, shame on him. Well, <laughs> you didn't you didn't do a real good risk analysis. Yeah, you picked the wrong one. That's right. <laughs> so you know, but you know, hopefully, uh, who knows? Uh, every kid's different, right? So hopefully, it's all those kids out there that are growing up that aren't. I don't know. I don't even know what advice to give them. Just don't believe what's that, what you see on social media. Yeah. And just you, don't believe and it. And you know, I, I think that the, the best thing to, to end it would be just li- lift your lift your eyes up about two feet. And, you know, you're, you you might they might think it's the entire world is in the phone, but it's not. Yeah. There's so much more out there. So thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, rate us on the podcast platforms, and we will see you next time. <laughs>